Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, Frankfurt United Methodist Church, and Mokina United Methodist Church merged together. I ask that you center yourself, take a deep breath, focus on the power of the divine coming into your life today as we journey through this daily devotion together. Friends, hear this affirmation from Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not for disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. Would you just settle your minds, your hearts, and your spirits and join me in an attitude of prayer? Gracious, merciful, and loving God, your voice calls to us from over the waters like thunder. May we be ever mindful and attentive to your call, so we might know what it is you would have us to do. Be with us as we faithfully accept our calling without hesitation or fear and enter into that calling with persistence, trust, and strength. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is Mind Your Call. We're all called. Jesus calls us to be disciples. We're called to be part of the church. Everyone is called to enter God's house, to be part of God's kingdom, kingdom, and a co-creative, reconciling love. Our anthology reading today comes from Thomas Kelly, A Testament of Devotion. When we say yes or no to calls for service on the basis of heady decisions, we have to give reasons to ourselves and to others. But when we say yes or no to calls, on the basis of inner guidance and whispered promptings of encouragement from the center of our life, or on the basis of a lack of any inward rising of that life to encourage us in that call, we have no reason to give, except one, the will of God as we discern it. Then we have begun to live in guidance. And I find God never guides us into an intolerable scramble of panting fervishness. That's a mouthful. The cosmic patience becomes, in our part, our patience. For after all, God is at work in the world. It is not we alone who are at work in the world, frantically finishing a work to be offered to God. Life from the center is a life of unhurried peace and power. It is simple. It is serene. It is amazing. It is triumphant. It is radiant. It takes no time, but it occupies all our time. It makes our life programs new and overcoming. We need not get frantic. God is at the helm. And when our little day is done, we lie down quietly in peace, for all is well. Wonderful words by Thomas Kelly. There is often when we have this this inner call, when we hear God's voice. That's one way to say it. There's different ways when we discern our our calling or our vocation or just move with God's movement. When we hear that voice like thunder or that still small voice, there's often this urgency to get out, to go, to do. We see this in ministry all the time. People feel like something is right, like it's the time to act and, and we want to act quickly. And there's there's a balance there because you want to use that energy for good, but you also need to move with God. And we are all adding to a much grander story. 
It is not this generation's responsibility to reconcile all of creation. That was the work of Jesus Christ, who then offers all of us a part in that work. And all of us is a lot. (laughs) All of us currently in this generation, that's a lot of people. Now you think of all of us in all generations, it's a lot of people. All of us in all generations to come, even more people. We don't all participate in that work. Some of us even work against that work. Yet, the work we do is a piece of a bigger puzzle. It is a part of a bigger whole. One line item in a grand plan. And I often, again, I think I've said it before, sometimes we want to act so quick and so furiously, and there's times to act quick and furiously. But often when it comes to God's will and God's plan and God's call in our lives, we can live into it. And we don't have to add to our over burden sense of hurry and rush and that that's just a epidemic in our world right now my prayer was that the pandemic and the forced slowed down would maybe stick a little bit but we we kicked right back into the the grind the machine and when we participate in that grind and that machine we're we're becoming parts of other people's story People who are gathering resources, power, and wealth for themselves, not for a better plan. Or we become part of our our cultural machine or our consumerism machine or whatever it is. Or expectation machine. Some of the greatest news is God offers us Peace and patience and the ability to slow down. Our call story from Scripture today comes from Jonah, although this is a little bit of a different type of call story, starting in Jonah chapter 1. The Lord's word came to Jonah. Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their evils have come to my attention. So Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship, headed for Tarshish. He paid the fare and went aboard to go with them away from the Lord. God bless the reading of Jonah today. Uh, Jonah was called. God said, Jonah, go get up to Nineveh. Go speak the word to them. And like many of us, <laughs> he got up, ran the other direction. And, and and Jonah's story is so great for so many reasons, but this part of it is good because it it is often our experience. I know many people who have gone into professional vocational ministry. There are pastors, for example, who spent a lot of their life running from that call. They heard it perhaps even very early, even as children, and maybe they were discouraged. Maybe there were doors closed, but often they ran from it because it's a pretty scary call. Heading across the world into enemy territory to offer good news to a people you don't want to offer good news to is pretty scary. Jonah ran. Again, the good news is God didn't give up on Jonah. God kept pursuing him. And even in his failings and even in his urgency to run and the bad decisions he made that followed, God rescued him, put him back on track. It's never too late to answer your call. Even if you heard a call as a child and Many years have passed. Perhaps that particular time and place has changed, but the call is still there and and God is still calling you. 
and, and it may change and it may be different from generation to generation or, or, or decade to decade in your life. That doesn't mean God has given up on you. God is still calling. God is still waiting. God is patient. God is loving. And God wants you to participate in God's great plans. Friends, today is a time of confession. It's good for our souls and spirits to let go of everything we're hanging on to, to turn back towards God, to ask for forgiveness, not only of God, but of others. So take time in silence, asking for God, confessing whatever's on your heart, letting go of the things that need to be let go. Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. God remembers your sins and iniquities no more. Let yourself forgive and forget and ask for forgiveness of others and offer it freely. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.